My name is Erin Bradley. I am a Gauteng Department of Education teacher at Brian Evan Primary School. Brian Evan Primary School is a school in Johannesburg, South Africa, and we've been using Purple Mash for about a year and a half. Purple Mash is a wonderful tool to help children to learn how to code, and Purple Mash is also tailor made for educational purposes. You will find it wonderful for teachers as well as parents. If you look at your football activity, we're looking at variables. Now, variables means that the computer will store either a string, which is a little bit of or you could have that it could store a number. And in Purple Mash, you can also store a function. A function just means a number of, act, a number of things that you want the computer to do. The computer can do some work. And this is quite powerful stuff because not many people would understand functions and variables. If you look at the first one, I'll go through all the activities to say swipe the ball. So when you do, you'd move your finger across the screen, that's called a swipe. When you swipe on the football, then you can move in different directions, up, down, left, right. If you go with that one, it will show with this four direction, north, south, east, west, the ball will move in any direction. You, you can set the speed, and look at this, friction. I'll explain that in a second, friction. Speed, if I set it to, let's just go to two or three. Okay, if I go like that, it's moving horizontally. And this over here is showing the variables. It's called a variable watch. This little panel shows you where the variables are. And in a minute, I'm gonna show you the X and Y position. This ball, at this current time is found, look, at 3 on the screen, at 3 on the x-axis. That means if you move across like that, it'll be 3. And on the y-axis, it's 8. Now, if I swipe, it's going to move in any direction. So if I swipe like that, it'll move down. Okay, it's moving that way. All right, so if I stop it, so that's what's called a swipe. If we go to the second activity, Give the ball some friction. Now, you guys will love this because you could probably do some science experiments. If you set the friction, now, the friction is a variable, but you don't declare the variable. Declaring means you create the variable. You just say football, friction, set to three. And if I set it to, well, let's do that as four. And now we've got, Tundo is going to kick the ball. So I say when swiped, and we know that he's very, very, good at football so we would go and we'll go in the right direction and we'll make the football moving at a speed of let's make it six or seven like that so if I go here and I go like that you can see look it's slowing down why is it slowing down friction remember all the forces that are countering the moving ball Going against the ball in terms of its movement is called friction. So I set it to four. Look where Tando could kick on the, on the field to this point. So if we had to change the friction, make it three, kill, go there. It should go a bit further because the friction is less. Wow, it goes off the field. If we went and changed the friction to be one, moved it over there, it should go even further because it's less friction. So the higher the number, the more the friction. If I make it like 10, then that really, that's like Tanduk kicking the ball, but he's got like maybe a lot of friction against it, and the ball can't move so easily. So if I swipe, look, ball's going only to there. Doesn't even get to the halfway point. Remember this, friction is a variable that you can set, and you must set it before. If I move this here, look if I move it there right to the bottom it'll still work because this is an event but it'll read that bit of code so if I go like that there we go it's still working so the friction but when you declare usually put your variables in the in the beginning and I'll explain why in a minute declare your variables in the beginning all right so now this one says using the swipe speed and swipe angle I don't think you're gonna have a problem with that one grade six this one, reset the ball when it hits a wall. Now, this one would be very interesting. Sam, I thought of you in with this one. Just have a look at it. And don't forget to look at the JavaScript by going to C code. 
if we go over here, look there, it says create variable. It says create a function to reset the ball to its starting speed and X and Y position. Now we don't know where the X and Y position is unless we go into play mode. Let's go into play mode. Press on the green button and here is the variable watch. This panel will tell you, look, X is 3, Y is 8. I could move the ball. Can I do that? No. It's not allowing me to move the ball. So if I see it's X is 3, Y is 8. So go out of the play, out of play mode. And now we know X is 3, Y is 8. So watch carefully. It says when you move, move the ball, it must go back to X3, Y8. Call this function when the ball hits the wall. Now we know when it hits the wall, it's a collision detection. So we'll first of all move the ball. So we know we can move it in any direction, any direction. The football will then move at a speed of... Let's go with five or six, five. Okay, so we've got five. So we know when the ball moves, like over here, ball moves, it's moving. But that's not everything. We know that it's moving when it hits the ball. When it hits the wall, so collision detection, when the ball hits the sides, the wall, then we want it to go back to X3, Y8. So let's do that. We're going to create a variable. Now I'm putting it over here, but it shouldn't be here. It's going to be up top there. Create variable. And then the reason why I'm putting it over here, declaring the variable later, is just to show you that why you must do it over here. It must be the first thing you do. And it's a function. Now when you name a variable, it could be a number, a string, or a function. I'm going to say position ball. Position ball. And that's what I'm going to call my function. Always give it a descriptive name. When you name your code, make it appropriate naming. You're going to see people who don't name it properly. They get so complicated, they won't even be able to do the stuff you'll be able to do. If you name your functions and your code, everything in your code appropriate, it becomes more meaningful and understandable. Now watch over here. In this function position ball, I want to move football. So I'm going to go X. Set to what number? Three. Two, three. So that's the X part. Now I want to set the ball to the Y part. So I'm going to, it's part of this create function position ball. The position ball function, Y must be eight. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's going to put position the ball. Now we need to call this function. So I'm going to go change when the ball hits the wall change the variable now look at that it says variable name question mark in other words the computer is telling me i don't know what you're talking about it's saying this bit of code saying i don't know what you're talking about variable name question mark it's saying you you don't make sense now watch when i move this block this yellow this variable i'm going to move it up to declare it first now remember it reads downwards as soon as it reads this bit of code, it's going to know you are making a thing called a variable, called position ball. So then it knows, aha, the computer has stored it in memory. It's learnt that there's a thing, a function called position ball. And then it works on it. So watch now. It says, when football collides with the wall, variable name, look, and it's showing the name. And the reason why now it's showing the name of the ball is because of the function why it's saying the name of the function because you declared it above please make sure that always when you code declare your variables first if you don't do that you'll see your friends are going to be stuck they're going to be like this is so hard to do and your code will work it's very important when i was learning coding at one stage i very often got caught up with variables declare them in the beginning Okay, so it's going to call this and it'll jump to the function position ball. Now let's bring in the friction part. So we know the friction, we'll make it 2. All right, let's see if this works. It sets the ball back to its position and you guys will then finish it off. So if I move, it's moving the ball. Remember when it hits the wall, 
Now it's going to stop over there. If I swipe it again, go there. It jumped back to x3, y8. Watch this variable. Watch the variable watch. If I click it, three, uh, it was so fast you didn't pick it up. And it's showing the changing position of the ball. Look where it ended there. 20 on the x-axis and y8. Now, I wanted to show you one more thing. And that was the reason why my ball's not following the wherever I want to send it. I go football, and here it says angle. I want to set the angle to the swipe angle. So now, Tando, if I click over here and I move it this way, it's going to go to angle. Watch. There. And the ball hits it and goes back to the original position, 3-8. 3-8 on the... If I go down... And this little bit of code over here, football, angle, set to swipe angle. If I move like that. All right, so if I swipe upwards, it can even go opposite direction, like that. Look where it's going. Back to three and... Okay, so let to, just to recap and give you the most important parts of today's lesson. Always declare your variables first. And you'll know that you're declaring them by the create state that says create a function called position ball always make that first and declare the undeclared variable which is friction you are setting that to the number three you declare those two first that should be a general rule that you always do if you do that you'll see your code will work those of you who are intending to make games one day like FIFA games, fighting games, this is a very important lesson today that you're learning. And it's not only that, if you're going to do any form of coding, declaring your variables right at the beginning, try and make that that's something that you always do. Now, Jenna, look at this, the JavaScript. The JavaScript is the scripting part of all of this. It says there's a football object, that's the ball, and it's set with a friction. Look, it's a, a variable. But it doesn't say variable in front. And then this one says VAR for variable. Position ball equals the name of the variable is this one. We are naming our variable. And it's a what type of variable? A function. And look, we declare our function with round brackets. So we go function and open and closed round brackets, curly brackets, common to JavaScript, and then football, the position of X and Y. Now when you play around with this, you can even change it. If you go like 8-8, eight, eight, let's see where that would be. You can change this. If you make that 9-8, you can go back to your code and see how it changes everything. And then this is the football, the on-swipe event, in other words, when you swipe on the football, it can move in any direction. We call a function, which is speed, angle, and look, speed and angle are set as the two parameters. Parameters, speed, and angle. They are going to be in that function, the speed and angle. So there's the angle and the speed. And here's the on collision event please study this guys and look at this this is the call to position ball when that little bit this line of code over here that i'm highlighting gets called it jumps to the position ball function so the position ball function is this this line of code will be read all right thanks boys and girls i think that's all i'm going to say for this moment but if you didn't really understand what i was saying please do refer to the youtube video that we're going to post up for you guys and it should help you to understand something that most primary school children don't understand or even high school children struggle with variables when you go to very high school you're going to be one of the top it people because you're going to understand some of the stuff that is not always understood by others